In this video, I want to go over a couple of examples from the section 2.4 in the LOC5 textbook. So I've got two examples I want to go through um, in detail in this video. And if you want to uh, download or open up this uh, worksheet while we're going through this, go to our Canvas page, scroll down to the Chapter 2 module, and it's the Chapter 2 in-class notes, worksheets, and handouts. And I'm looking at the 2.4 activity examples. So uh, since the video, I'm going to skip the activity that is uh, in class activity and just go over the two examples on the second page of that worksheet. Okay, example one, we've got a population of all 50 US states uh, listed in ascending order here in this table. So we have uh, 35 million, that's uh, California, and then half a million, I'm guessing Washington or Wyoming or Alaska and all the states in between. You want to determine whether there are any outliers and if so to identify them. Uh, one way to do that would be to um, input all this data into StatKey or some other software program and make a box plot and it should reveal if there's any upper or lower outliers. I'm going to use the uh, outlier formulas to answer this question. So I'm going to write down here the upper outlier Excuse me, let me scroll this over. The upper outlier formula is Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range IQR. So for this particular data set, we're given the five number summary. So this is Q1, Q2, the median population, 4.17 million. Q3, 75th percentile, and the max. So using the five number summary, I'm going to plug in Q3, 6.676 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, and that's Q3 minus Q1. So that's 6.676 minus Q1, 1.66. Throw this in your calculator. And I get about 14.2 million. This is the upper cutoff. So then we just have to look at the list and see which of these data points have more than 14 million. So there are, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. Because you got 12 million right here, and then jumping up to 17 million, there are four upper outliers: 17.385, 19.281, 22.4. 22.472, and here California's population, 35.842 are the four upper outliers. And then we need to see if there's any lower outliers. The lower outlier formula is Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, IQR. So that's going to be 1.66 is Q1 minus 1.5 times 6.676 minus 1.66. And if you throw that in your calculator, you get actually a negative number. It's minus 5.864 million, which the formula makes sense, but that minus doesn't really. So since there are no states with negative population, the smallest data points 0.5 or half a million. There are no outliers, lower outliers. So in total, we just have the four upper outliers for this problem. All right, I'm going to move up to uh, example two. We're still looking at the 50 states, but now we're looking at gross state product. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we need to analyze this box plot. This for all 50 states shows the great the gross state product. GSP per capita, dollars per resident for the 50 states. And since we have the box plot, we have visualization, we just have to look for these little uh, pluses or asterisks or dots, depending on what software program. Stack so uses these little asterisks. So there are two upper outliers. And we need to be approximate here. So this is going down here, I would guess around 58,000. And then the highest outlier looks like it's slightly more halfway between, so maybe 67. And these are definitely approximate. 
somewhere around those two values. And there are no lower outliers. That's because there's no uh, dots or asterisks or anything over here. All right, so I need to estimate the range and the IQR. So the range is maximum minus minimum, which is approximately for this set. Uh, again, we're going to that max, 67 minus, and the lowest value. Again, this is definitely an approximation. Down here, maybe 20,000. 18, 20,000, we get a range of about, I want to say about, approximately, because we don't know for sure, 47,000 GSP. All right, now we want to get the IQR. All right, IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Which for this, we're going to now look at kind of the, the fat box and the box plot. This gives you that middle 50%. So Q3 is going to be the upper cutoff of the box. So Q3 is going to be down here. It looks about halfway between 40 and 50,000. So I'm going to approximate that Q3 is 45,000. And then we're going to take away... Q1, which is going to be the bottom half of the of the uh, larger box in the middle, and it's so uh, maybe 36, 37,000. I'll say 37,000 here. So the IQR, the dollar sign now is about 45 minus 37. That's about 8,000. And again, I'm going to add the approximately because unless we had more data or better tick marks on the x-axis here, we can be more certain. But we just want to get approximation. And the last question, or sorry, two more questions, estimate the median. So that's going to be the center line of this box plot right here. That gives me the median. So that's going to be a little less than 40,000. So I'll say the median is about, okay, I'll say 30, 38,000, something like that. It looks like it's pretty close to Q1, maybe 39,000. It's pretty close to the 40. And we're being approximate. Is that about there? Does the data appear to be symmetric, skewed to left, skewed to the right, or none? So in the symmetry for a box plot, we're kind of looking at is one of the tails longer than the other? Here are the tails represented by these end lines or whiskers are sometimes called. And I would say these two are fairly close to the same length. But if we look at this, there's more data going to the right of the median, and we have these two um, upper outliers. So there's, let's say, a slight skew to the right. It's not a, probably not a huge skew. This is somewhat symmetric, but there's a little bit of skewness there. Again, this range from the 39,000 to the um, 67,000 or so, that is half the data. Yeah, this is 25 states. And right here, this cutoff down to the bottom, that's the other half, 24, 25 states or so. So since there's more of a spread to the right, we say this is a right skew. So using just the skewness, do you expect the mean to be greater or less than the median? Remember, the mean is more sensitive to outliers. I could also say the mean tends to follow the tail or skewness. That's one way I kind of think about that. So we know the median's right here in the middle, 39,000 or so. The mean's going to be larger. The outliers are going to pull the mean out more than the median. So the mean will be larger than the median. Since the data is right skewed. All right, and the last question, what could be the 45th percentile? Out of these options, 30,000, 39,000, 42,000, 49,000. I like these questions because uh, we should be able to eliminate these, which is a, a good way to approach these. You should be able to eliminate. 
Again, the 50th percentile is the median. That's right about here. This is the 25th percentile. So the first option they give us is 30,000. It can't be 30,000. 30,000 is way too small to be the 40, uh, 45th percentile. 30th is way down here. This is less than 25th percentile. Next option is 39,000. Again, that's what I approximated the median to be. Okay, well, let's, let's keep that there for right now. 42,000, notice right here, 42 is right here somewhere. 42 has to be greater than the 50th percentile because it's past the mean. So it cannot be 42,000, and we can make a similar argument for 49,000. It cannot be these options. So 39,000 is the only plausible possibility for the 45th percentile on this problem. Okay, that includes this video. Uh, hopefully this helped clear up some confusion on outlier formulas and analyzing box plots. <laughs>